Hello Stampers! My name is Linda Bettinger and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator. And today I'd like to show you how I made this card. This is the third in my Christmas card designs for this holiday season. And I decided to do something in more contemporary colors rather than the traditional. And um, so, and as a result of the uh, Christmas catalog, we have this wonderful stamp set, and this is what I'm using today. Um, it's called Star of Light, and the Star of Light set, and today I'll be using this sentiment, A Little Christmas Spirit Brightens the World, and that's for the inside of the card. I'll be using this little spray of, well, I don't know what it is, just stars, I guess. I'll be using this large swirl of stars, and I'll be using this little triple star piece here. And then the last thing is this sentiment here, Star of Wonder, Star of Night. And um, th then also I'll be using the Starlight Thinlets dies, and I'll show those in a minute, the ones that I'm using. This one has quite a few different dies in it that are very intricate, very beautiful. Um, and this is where I'm getting the detail. Let me move those out of the way. And the different thing I'm doing today is showing a technique on creating this background on the foil. Um, and it's a technique that almost looks like it's hammered tin or um, some sort of relief on metal and it's done with embossing powder and and that's part of the of the design of this card today and I'm going to change it up just a little I decided I don't like this background behind the blue so I'm going to try and do it today with just the blue star of wonder star of night and uh, no background but I think it kind of gets lost on on the uh, foil background and I'm cutting this piece of silver just a little bit bigger than I did for this card because I think it'll look a little bit better. Anyway, so let's talk about what we're going to need to do this card today. Um, first, we'll need um, the Out of Whisper White. What's going on there? Uh, a regular card base that measures eight and a half by five and a half, scored and folded at four and a quarter. Then we'll need a soft sky layering piece, and this piece measures five and a quarter by four. Then a piece of foil, silver foil in this case, and I'm cutting that at five inches by three and seven eighths of an inch. Then we need a large piece of scrap to cut out our um, star that goes on the back of, uh, of the, or on the front of the card. Then we need a piece that measures, um, let's see, this piece measured two and seven eighths by seven eighths, and that's gonna be for our sentiment here. Then we need a piece of, of the soft sky that measures one half an inch by three and a half inches, and then a piece of silver foil here that measures roughly a quarter of an inch by about three inches. And those are the things that are going to go on some of that decoration on the inside of the card. Um, and then you'll need a scrap of I use silver glimmer paper that measures at least two and a half by three. So you can get the detail of the star and the individual little pieces out of there. So let's get started. The very first thing we can do is we can take our base once we fold and scored it and have it ready to go and we can adhere our piece of soft sky onto the face of the card um, straight away. So that's what I'm going to do here. Let me bring out my silicone mat here. And I was going to use snail, but I'm so much better off with Tombow. I think I'll see if I can use Tombow here. And get this piece adhered to the card base, and then we can just set it aside until we're ready to put the card together. So, 
going to adhere that to the front here. And get that moved around so I've got pretty much the same margin all the way around. Okay, there we go. So we can just set that aside for the time being until we need it to assemble the card. Uh, where we're going to be doing a lot of our work today is on this silver foil piece. This technique that gives you this kind of hammered metal look is uh, clear embossing powder uh, and Versamark. And so the first thing we're going to do is let me bring in my piercing mat here and a piece of scratch paper and my foil piece. And what we're going to do is really do a job. Um, I forgot to use my embossing buddy on one piece of foil and it this foil really picks up the fingerprint, so it's very, very important to um, to use the embossing buddy and just get this one nice and covered. Okay, so then we need the Versamark ink, which I'll put here, and then I've mounted several of my stamps. This is the large swirl out of that stamp set, and it is absolutely gorgeous when it's done up and done in inks on other colors of paper, it's beautiful as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, ink up my Versamark, or ink up my stamp, I guess, with Versamark. And you know, I've got a brand new Versamark pad that I intended to break out for just this video, and I'm going to do that because that one needs to be re-inked. And this one is brand shiny new, and so it's nice and juicy. Um, and I will say that because it's nice and juicy, one of the things that I found is you have to be very careful about not moving your stamp once you get it down because it tends to slide on this uh, card front. So getting this set so that it's all on my piercing mat here. And I'm going to put this first swirl right up here at the top. Press down. And remove that and I don't know if you can see that on camera but you can see just the very light edge of the um, Versamark piece when you do this you'll be able to see it and that's helpful as you try to add some of these other little littler uh, stamps on here to be able to see where you've already put this if you're nervous about it the smart thing to do is to go a little bit at a time and go ahead and heat treat, uh, emboss, lay their embossing powder down and heat treat your piece because you can always add more and keep going back. Um, but I find that it's clear enough that I can really see. So on this one, I'm going to have that come right across the middle. Okay, and maybe one more piece going off the page down here at the bottom. It makes such a pretty impact on your card. Okay, there. That's all I'm going to use that one for. And now I'm going to switch to this one that is, um, looks like almost a... Um, a spray of stars. I'm not sure exactly how to say what that is, but I'm going to use it a couple of different places where I've got some open space and it's fine that some of it goes off the page. I'll put a little piece up here and maybe a little piece down here. All right. Then the last one is this three little stars. And I thought that would be good to fill in. And this is the one that can slide on you if you're not careful. Hmm. I can see a spot here that I really could use this. I'm going to come in there. 
And like I said, if you're nervous about this at all, just do a piece and heat emboss it and then come back and add more later. Um, it, you really can see where you have put down your decoration. I'm not sure you can see it on camera, but in real life you can definitely see where these images have been placed. Okay, I think that's probably enough. And I can put the Versamark aside for the moment anyway. Okay, so now I'm going to use my clear embossing powder. And um, cover this piece. I'm going to try and keep my fingerprints off of it as much as possible. Um, there you can see the pattern starting to emerge. Um, might be kind of fun to do this sometime also in the silver on the silver just to see what would happen. Okay, so let me grab one of my little brushes here. Although a little bit of this clear on the back just adds a little bit more sparkle, um, it isn't going to bother me to have an extra spot or two where I've got um, some of this clear powder. I think that's got just about everything. All right, so I'm going to set that aside and I'm going to bring out my heat tool. Now this card will warp as we go through and um, uh, heat emboss this image that we've got on here, these images. The card is going to buckle and what I find is that once it's dry and the embossing powder has been um, embossed on here, you can just flatten the card again. There's no problem. So, don't be alarmed if this looks like it's really buckling. Okay. And you see how the clear starts to give you that look like it might be hammered tin. I thought this was so intriguing. And you can see the card really buckles. Now just let me make sure that I've gotten all of the embossing powder covered. Pardon my head if I got that in there. But I think that's it. Okay, so I'm going to set that aside for the moment. And um, I've got quite a bit of clear embossing powder here on my scratch paper. So let me see if I can put that away. Okay. It's very easy to get this kind of all over. All right, so there we have our piece. And actually, that's probably been enough time. This is now cool to the touch, and that has dried. So you can literally just bend this little panel back into shape. And uh, I found if you wanted to, I suppose you could put something heavy on it and let it sit aside. But I found even just finger pressing this, I could get it back into a fairly flat state fairly quickly. So there is our piece for our background already done. So we have a little bit more embossing to do. So I'm going to set this aside. And we have our sentiment here. This one is the Star of Wonder, Star of Night, on this piece of um, soft sky. So I'm going to get my Versamark back. And I'm going to put this sentiment on this little strip of paper here. Get my scratch paper back down. And... 
when you're using um, photopolymer, it's really very, very cool because you can, let me also use my embossing buddy now that I'm thinking about it, on this. Um, you can see right where you're putting it because ordinarily I would do my embossing and then cut the piece out around it, but uh, with um, photopolymer, you can really see right where this is going and um, so I think we can be pretty successful. Let me just make sure I'm inked up. And put this down centered. And there we have our sentiment. And for this, I'm going to use um, silver embossing powder. So now I'm going to take a little bit of the silver embossing powder, I don't think I need the spoon, and just cover that sentiment. And flick off the extra. And there we have our sentiment on here. And Got just a spot or two. I want to brush off a little bit of extra powder. <laughs> there we go. All right. So let me get this powder back in the container. And set that aside for our next bit of embossing. Um, so now I'm going to heat emboss this piece here. And let's see, there's my paper piercer, which will help me hold that in place. See a little bit more stray powder there. Okay. I'm doing this so you can see it on camera. Okay, and there is our sentiment, which I will also set aside. Then I'm going to get my card base here because one of the things that I did on this card is I use the other sentiment on the inside a little Christmas spirit brightens all the world and then put these other pieces to decorate the inside of the card so I'm going to do that again using the Versamark and the silver for this sentiment making sure I put it on right side up that would be good and centering that on the top, on the inside. There we go. And let's see. Bringing back my piece of scratch paper and my silver embossing powder. And there we have our sentiment. A little stray powder and we'll emboss that as well. Okay, let me pour this stuff back into the jar. This embossing powder is such a wonderful value. You know, even with as much as you end up losing, um, just because it kind of has a tendency to go all over, I've got to tell you that this little pot of embossing uh, embossing powder I can't tell you how long I've had that and it's still full it's just amazing to me all right so let's emboss this little piece here there we go 
So that's nice and embossed on the inside, and I believe that that is all of the embossing. Okay, so we're actually in a position. Uh, I've run my dies, so let me tell you a little bit about the setup for the dies that I've used. Um, so I used my Big Shot platform, my thin die adapter, then my cutting plate, then I put down my paper and my die. So um, in this case, um, I might be using this piece of scrap and I placed my die down on top of it. Um, and then my top plate and ran that through the Big Shot. Now you can run more than one piece through at a time, so you really could, in fact, run the piece of glimmer paper. I will say about the glimmer paper that I find it cuts better and it's easier on your glimmer paper if you put the glimmer side down and place your die on the back side. Um, and I tuck mine into the corner to get as much as I can. And in this case, the little stars that I needed for, this one's already coming out, but you can get the idea. And um, then run all of that through the, through the Big Shot all at the same time. And you can be a, a little bit more efficient that way. Uh, to save time, I've already run my pieces through the Big Shot. So I have my pieces already done here. And let me move this, these platforms out of the way and I'll show you what, what I cut out with my Big Shot. Okay, so this piece here, I cut the um, soft sky and I don't see my paper, there it is, my piercer. And on this one, I don't have my brush handy, uh, but I found that just getting one corner out, this is one that would come out so easily if you use the dye brush, um, but this one peels right out. And you'll see there's an embossing detail on this one. Um, when it's run on a piece of cardstock or the silver foil, it would show up on like that as well. And um, I think that's awful pretty just the way it is. Um, then I ran... Um, my large star through, and this is the little the star I got, and I've cut several ahead of time. And then the smaller star, and you can see that you just punch those out and they come right out. Um, and then um, the last one also came right out. In fact, it's kind of coming apart. So um, this one is the star detail for the middle. Now, when this one came out, what didn't pop out were all of these little um, little details, um, small know, circles and ovals in the star itself, but they take nothing. In fact, I could probably pop them out with my fingernail. Yeah, that, there they go. And um, it's just a, a matter of taking out those few and frankly if I used my dye brush I've got it in another room and so I didn't bring it over when I started my filming. So there we go we've got all of those pieces out and I've cut a few more pieces of the stars so we could have plenty to put our card together and we are at the place where I think we're ready to put this card together. That you can see that, especially if you get yourself organized, uh, this is one of those cards that you could do in mass. Do your die cutting at one point, do your heat embossing at another time, and then just put the whole thing together, and you could actually make quite a few of these in an assembly line uh, process. Okay, so on this, this card goes on next, this detail. And with this, I popped it up with dimensionals. So let me grab a few dimensionals here. And because this had a tendency to warp, uh, I'm going to add a few more dimensionals than I would ordinarily. Uh, normally, I would just put the four in the corner and one or two in the middle. But 
I don't want this thing to um, decide that it's going to go back to its warped state. So I'm going to add a few extra dimensionals down the sides here. And I'm going to add them at the top and the bottom. This is probably excessive. Um, but I think it... Uh, I think it helps with the way the card looks in the end. So, and you could, this would be a good place to use the adhesive strips where you could put a strip along the edge um, and take the warp opportunity completely out by just covering the whole end um, down one side. In fact, maybe I'll try that on the next one I put together. Um, the only difference is that they're a little bit taller than the dimensionals, so they're, it raises this up just a tiny bit more. So you, really your choice. Depends on whether your Christmas cards go and are hand-delivered or, or put in the mail. Okay, so now I'm going to center this as best I can. I'll lay it down. Oops, I can tell already. And you just don't want to lay it down very heavily until you've got it centered. I'm going to pull this towards me because I can't see in order to get this where I'd like it. the problem with lots of dimensionals. They want to all grab. Okay. There. I think that is on here now very securely. And there. I think that looks just fine. Okay. Now, uh, to put this on here, I also raised this star up on dimensionals and I'll show you what I did to do that. I took um, like this um, dimensional page and what I did was I just cut up one of these outside strips kind of all the way and peeled off one half and then I put this strip down on my star all the way down the middle and put that into place and then um, took these two little extra edges here and put them on these long star on these um, star um, points and so there I have a pretty good support of this star uh, all the way around okay now I want this star I'm going to just put this one down here so I get an idea of placement then I want this star this one if you'll notice crossed over and came over the sentiment. So I cut this sentiment a little bit smaller because I didn't think I wanted that. And so I'm going to set this down centered at the top and with roughly the same margin on either side here and between where the sentiment will go and the top of the card. So there we have that piece. All right. Now, um, to get these other pieces on, I'm using glue dots. And what I've done is I used, um, let's see what happened to my paper piercer, there it is. Um, I used this opportunity to just roll these glue dots over on themselves. And you've seen me do this on some other ones. So they're roughly about half the width. And then I place them 
on one of the one of the points here on the star and I did that on four sides so I'll take a second here and do that you could also take these in your fingers and roll them so you get a little roll um, and then put that on the back of this I've, I've done both methods and both of them work just fine so again kind of rolling over on itself to get it about half the width and then putting it into place on one of these star points and I have one that's stuck to my finger here so <laughs> I'm going to use that for the last one to put in place because it's already rolled in half and there we go all right now this star has a longer point to it and a shorter point so I want to match that to the star that I've got on here and so I set this down so that remember that embossed detail that was on here I had the star points match the embossed detail and that way I know this star is absolutely centered on that card isn't that pretty I think this is just a lovely little card all right then I used the same idea with um, these individual stars that I was putting in place and part of the reason I did that is because folded over and then put on the back of the star even though there's plenty of room to lay the the uh, glue dot down what it does is it has a tendency to lift the star just a little you see that there's a little bit of space now underneath this star all the way around not as much as a dimensional but it adds a little bit of dimension to your card and so I kind of like that idea and um, speaking of dimensionals um, for my sentiment I put three along the back so this is the experiment here to put three sentiments or three um, uh, dimensionals on here and not put anything on the backing and just use this soft sky um, because I, I just thought that was lost on the back there and so okay now this we need to get centered if you will on the front of this card there I do think I like that better the um, the piece on this one was a bit bigger so I reduced the size of the little banner here and didn't put anything on the back and I think it looks just fine all right so um, then I took uh, a little star and put it on the corner of my banner here and then put a few more stars around the front of the card so um, maybe one here and maybe another small one um, down here there so basically we have the uh, front of the card completed and if you'll remember we've already put our sentiment on the inside and I thought a flat um, glue dot on the back of one of these stars here added a little something and then we had two other small pieces um, we had a piece that was a half inch by four inches and what we're going to do is put that down on here and what I will tell you is that I did use just um, snail on the soft sky piece and I try to give a little bit of a margin about the same 
to sort of frame the bottom of the card here. No, that isn't straight. Let me try that again. It's peeled off a little bit of the back there, but I think we'll be fine. Um, you can take that piece up a little bit and probably just peel it off. Now, laying this piece down so that it has margin on both sides. And then the other thing I did was took a piece of this foil at a quarter of an inch by three and a half inches. And on this piece, I'm going to use Tombow. And I'll tell you why. If you get snail on the front of this foil, it's really hard to get off. Even my magic eraser uh, left a residue. So I thought for this one, I'll use the Tombow and just lightly put uh, a little bit of Tombow on the back of this. And then I can use my tweezers to pick that up. And then I centered this on this piece. There we go. To add just a little detail. And I got a little bit of glue on the soft sky piece. But using Tombow ensures that I don't get any glue on that silver piece. And there we have our card. So it really is a pretty fast design, pretty high impact, and I think this technique of adding the, you'll have to let me know which one you like better. I do like this piece cut a little bit longer. Um, uh, this I think was too short, and I think this looks fine without anything on the back. And I'll have to say I do like this one better. Um, and I think this technique of using the clear embossing uh, powder on the foil is kind of interesting. I, it, it, like I said, it's almost a, um, an embossed metal or a pounded metal kind of look. Anyway, um, that's the project for today, number three in my Christmas designs. And I'll be back soon with another 3D project uh, or another Christmas card or another uh, other card um, and uh, you can get everything that I did today if you if you think about it I did everything today with one stamp set and one one die set and um, got a little extra piece of rubbish there now um, this set is available in the Christmas catalog and the, you can purchase the die set separate from the stamp set, but if you buy them together, you save 10%. So it's a good value to think about this. And I think this has so many um, opportunities, the, the dies and the details and the stars and everything else. Uh, I can think of a million things that we can do with this. And so I'll be back with more projects using this, this set. Um, also, this month for September... Uh, and you'll see in the information down below that um, the hostess code is there for people who put in an order with me for $25 or more. Uh, get entered into a drawing. And this month we're doing the uh, Tag Topper Punch, um, a $23 value in the catalog. And I'll draw a name at the end of the month, um, and somebody will win that punch. And... Um, uh, also, uh, if you make any kind of an order with me and use the hostess code, you'll get a product gift from me. And if you don't have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, I'd love to be your demonstrator. And if you have questions or uh, comments, please leave them. I'm happy to respond. You can also, this 24-7 shop is also where my blog is. My blog isn't... Um, sturdy enough to take my videos. They're a little bit too long. So uh, I do put on there what videos I've put up and um, 
the details about the hostess code and all of that kind of thing is on my blog there as well. But you can also leave me a message there, and I'd love to help if you have questions or issues that you that you would like help with. So I'm babbling at this point. So, <laughs> so until next time, bye.